Okay, this is the first lesson in the new unit, Physical Behavior of Matter, which is Unit 6. Two of the uh, unit objectives that this first lesson will hope to accomplish is to distinguish between the three phases of matter by identifying their different properties and representing them with particle diagrams, and to perform simple conversions between Celsius and Kelvin temperature scales. Some important vocabulary that we will discuss during this first video are the terms energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, and temperature. And perhaps you've heard of some of these um, already before. Okay, let's get started. Again, you are following along in your note packet and taking notes. And then when you go into class, we will break up into smaller groups doing some different activities. So first, what is energy? Energy is the capacity to do work. Energy is the capacity to do work. Or the ability of matter to do work. So there's our first vocabulary term. Kinetic energy and potential energy might be terms that you've heard of in earth science or maybe eighth grade science. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion or movement and it's associated with temperature change. So when the temperature changes, kinetic energy changes. Potential energy, aka something called phase energy because it's also called phase energy because this is the um, energy that's associated with phase changes say a solid turning into a liquid whoops sorry or a liquid into a gas it is the energy of position sometimes referred to as stationary or stored energy. Now you'll hear me refer to it as stored energy. Potential energy is stored energy. Kinetic energy is energy of motion. And this energy is, is associated with phase change, not temperature change phase change. And the last big vocabulary word is temperature. Temperature is a measure of the blank of a substance particles. Well, we said temperature had to do with kinetic energy, so it's a measure of the average kinetic energy. of a substance's particles. This symbol right here, the triangle, means delta, if you haven't seen that before, D-E-L-T-A, and that's equivalent to change. So when you see delta temp or delta T, that's change in temp. Delta K-E is change in kinetic energy. It does not depend on sample size and this change is measured in Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. Heat, on the other hand, is a quantity of energy. It cannot be measured directly, as opposed to temperature. We can read a thermometer, see what the temperature change is, and then through using a formula, we can determine the amount of energy that is either absorbed or released in a process or in a chemical reaction. Heat though can only be measured as it's transferred from a hotter object to a cooler one. So this is important here. Heat travels high to low. For example, 
when you fall down and you sprain your ankle and it swells up, one of the first things that you do is put ice on it. So you wrap your ankle with ice and after a while you'll notice that your ankle feels cold and the cold pack that was on it feels warm. Well, the reason being is because when your ankle is sprained and it swells, there's a lot of heat in it. Remember heat travels from high to low. So the heat in your ankle travels from your ankle to the ice pack. The ice pack absorbs all the heat out of your ankle and therefore your ankle feels cold and the cold pack after a while will feel warm. This does depend on the sample size, so it does depend on sample size. The larger the sample, the more heat needed to bring it to a desired temperature. It's measured in joules, which is mostly what we will see in here in this class, kilojoules, so we do have to know how to um, convert from joules to kilojoules and vice versa, and calories. You may see mention of calories in different um, problems, but for purposes of this class we usually work in joules and kilojoules. And one kilojoule is equal to a thousand joules, so there's your conversion factor if we're changing from one unit to another. I meant to uh, mention initially, because this is new for most of you, that you can pause me, you can rewind me, um, whatever it is, you can stop and come back and finish it later. And I will ask you on Fridays for any feedback as we're going through this process so that I can make it the best possible experience for you guys. Here's a Venn diagram that basically shows um, what's connected between heat and temperature, and that is kinetic energy, but that's the only thing that connects the two words. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy, and heat measures the transfer of kinetic energy. They both have to do with kinetic energy. All right, some temperature scales. You should be very familiar with these. Fahrenheit, it's mostly what the weather is reported in, well, in this country. Celsius, in every other country. And Kelvin. We're going to use these two in class, okay? And it is useful for you to know how to convert from Fahrenheit and Celsius. Because a lot of times you might be traveling outside the country and you'll see the temperature in Celsius and wonder what it is. So if I'm going from Fahrenheit to Celsius, degrees Celsius is equal to 5 ninths Celsius minus 32. So I take 5 divided by 9 and multiply it whatever the Celsius temperature is and subtract 32 and that would give me the Celsius. But if I'm traveling out of the country, I probably have the temperature in Celsius, and I want it in Fahrenheit. So degrees Fahrenheit is basically the opposite. It's equal to 9 fifths Celsius plus 32. Okay. Again, you don't have to know how to do that for this class because we don't operate on Fahrenheit in chemistry. We are only going to deal with Celsius temperatures and Kelvin temperatures and they're pretty easy to uh, convert between. Absolute zero is negative 273 Celsius or zero Kelvin, the temperature at which all particle motion ceases. All right, the thermometer scales are calibrated by two fixed positions. We have the freezing and melting point of water at zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin and then we have the boiling point of water at 100 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Now, you can compare these two scales. 0 to 100 is 100 increments and 273 to 373 is also 100 increments. So if I were measuring the change in temperature, regardless of which scale I was using, Celsius or uh, Kelvin, the change would be exactly the same.
All right, a change of one degree Celsius then is the same as a change of one degree Kelvin, or in an equation form, delta one degree Celsius equals one degree Kelvin. And you can see that right here on this reading, you've got 0 to 100 is 100 degrees and 273 to 373 is 100 degrees difference. So we have 100 degrees difference here to go from freezing to boiling. And it would be the same down here, absolute zero. Well, at here it's actually a difference of 273. And Fahrenheit has no correlation whatsoever to the Celsius and Kelvin scale. So what two formulas do we need to use? Well, there's only one that's listed in table T. That's this top one. That's this listed on the back of your reference table. Or if you're trying to calculate Celsius, it's Kelvin minus 273. Now I tell students it's just easier to work with one formula, this one right here that's on the back of your reference table, and then manipulate it for whatever it is that you're solving. So for example, it's asking the Kelvin temperature that's equivalent to 35 degrees Celsius. So if I write Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273, then Kelvin equals 35 plus 273. And then I just simply do the math. And that's going to be 308 Kelvin. Kelvin equals 308. Let's take a look at the next problem. The classroom has a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature of the classroom in Kelvin? Again, I'm just going to start with my generic formula. K equals C plus 273, and K equals 21 plus 273, so K equals 294. Easy stuff, right? Okay. Three, what's the temperature in degrees Celsius when it's 300 Kelvin? Now again, I'm going to start with my regular formula. Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. And I'm given 300 K equals C plus 273. Okay, remember PEMDAS, reverse order of operations. We don't have any parentheses. We don't have any exponents. We don't have any multiplication, division, subtraction, addition. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. I subtract 273 from both sides. These cancel, and I'm left with 300 minus 273, which gives me 27 degrees Celsius. If something has a temperature of 5K, what is this in degrees Celsius? So again, K equals C plus 273. I'm writing down my formula. I'm substituting in 5K. I'm going to subtract 273 from both sides because I'm trying to find C. 5 minus 273, you can see, is going to be a negative number. So 5 minus 273 is negative 268 degrees Celsius. Here's my answers. And the last one in this section, a sample is heated and rises in temperature by 12 degrees. So basically, if a sample is heated and rises in 12 degrees, it changed 12 degrees. What is the temperature difference in Kelvin? Well, we said, one, we said delta T of 1 degree Celsius is equal to delta T of 1 Kelvin. So if this was a change of 12 degrees Celsius, a change of 12 Kelvin. All right, let's do some practice. We are going to be changing, depending on what we're given, to either Celsius or K. 
Kelvin. Okay. So the first one we're asked to find Kelvin. And we know that Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273. Therefore, Kelvin equals 0 plus 273. Therefore, it's simply 273 Kelvin. On this side, we're asked to find Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. We're given Celsius, I mean, sorry, we're given Kelvin, 20 Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. Reverse order of operations, we subtract 273 from both sides. So 20 minus 273 is going to give us a negative number. It's going to give us a negative 253 degrees Celsius. Back over to this side, we're going to have Kelvin equal to 50 plus 273, and that's going to give us a total of 50 plus 273 is 323 Kelvin. Now we're asked to find Celsius. We've got 117 Kelvin equal to Celsius plus 273. We can see already that by subtracting 273 from both sides, it's going to give us a negative number. 117 minus 273 gives us a negative 156 degrees Celsius. We have another one for Celsius. We've got 0 Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. So this is simply 273 degrees Celsius, which we know because 0 Kelvin and 273 Celsius are standard temperature. Back over to calculating Kelvin. Kelvin equals Celsius, which is negative 113 degrees Celsius plus 273. So a negative 113 plus 273 is going to reduce our 273 to 160 Kelvin. We have another negative problem. Kelvin equals negative 74 degrees Celsius plus 273. And we can see by looking at this that 74 is basically going to wipe out that 73. It's actually going to bring it down to 199 Kelvin. Okay, just a couple more. We have 5 degrees Kelvin, so we're going um, 5 Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. We're going to subtract 273 from both sides. We know this is going to be a very large negative number. 5 minus 273 is going to give us negative 268 degrees Celsius. We have 99 Kelvin Celsius plus 273. Again, I'm subtracting from both sides. Also, I'm going to have another negative number here, 99 minus 270. 3 is going to give me negative 174 degrees Celsius. Back over to Kelvin. Kelvin equals Celsius, so that's 31, plus 273. So 31 and 273 looks like it's going to be 304 Kelvin. We have another one for Kelvin. This time it's negative 200 degrees Celsius plus 273, and we can see that this 200 is going to knock out 200, leaving us with 73 Kelvin. A couple more for the Celsius side. 37 Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. Again, I'm subtracting reverse order of operations. 37 minus 273 can be a fairly large negative number. It's going to give us negative 236 degrees Celsius, and then 320 Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. Finally, I have one that's not negative. 273 minus 
273. 320 minus 273, I hope I didn't move that up too far for people, is going to give us 47 degrees Celsius. Got a negative a half a degree over here. Kelvin equals negative 0.5 degrees Celsius plus 273. So we're just reducing 273 by a half a degree. So 272.5 Kelvin. And the last one, 248 Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. Going to subtract from both sides. It's going to be negative, but it's going to be a small negative number. And that's going to give us negative 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. That's it for right now. Um, I was going to talk about different states of matter, but I think we're going to hold that for the next mini lesson. And have a good weekend, and I will see you next week.